the first step of a data pipeline is data ingestion. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. In fact, we're going to be talking about batch data ingestion, which means ingesting files into a staging area so that we can run analytics on top of it. What's up everybody, my name is Arpit and welcome to another episode of the Data Journey on GCP Live. Like I said, in this video we are talking about how to ingest files into Google Cloud so that you can run analytics on top of it. And the place where we're going to be ingesting all these files is Google Cloud Storage, well in most cases. But before we get into data ingestion mechanisms, let's first understand why do we need to think about data ingestions? Well, there are some challenges that we need to solve when solving data ingestion. The first one being that there is way too much data being produced right now. And to be able to analyze all that data, the first step is to ingest all that data. Sometimes it is way too much data and it is being produced extremely fast and you need analytics really fast, but you don't have enough resources or you don't have enough bandwidth to be able to ingest all that data and process all that data in a timely fashion. And another challenge is to make sure that the integrity of the data is maintained as you're ingesting that data. Process like checksumming, encryption, firewalls, all, all of these things need to be taken care of when ingesting your data. So how do we design our data ingestion? Well, let's start with the end goal in mind. Let's look at three things which are most critical to data being produced at source and being ingested onto the cloud, which is volume, velocity, and variety. The volume of the data will determine what kind of ingestion mechanism that you need to choose. So will the velocity of the data, how soon is that volume being produced? If you are producing more data in a day than you can ingest based on your bandwidth, how do you deal with a problem like that? And also what kind of data is being produced? Is it events? Is it files? Is it being produced in a database? Is it being produced through an API? So there's all sorts of data that you need to ingest. So based on volume, velocity, and variety, you need to decide what's going to be your ingestion mechanism. So let's find out how will the data ingestion design differ for different volumes and different velocities and different kinds of data. Let's start with data volume. Your data volume can go anywhere from a few gigabytes to terabytes to even petabytes of data. It all depends on how much data your organization is producing and what is it that you want to analyze right now. There are different options if you want to ingest different volumes of data. For example, if you are only ingesting about a few terabytes, single digit terabytes worth of data, you can either do that via Cloud Console or you can do that via a command line utility called GSUtil. If you're ingesting, let's say, tens or even hundreds of terabytes of data, you need to look at BigQuery Transfer Service or Google Cloud Storage Transfer Service. These are services provided specifically to ingest huge amount of data with millions of files in there. But what if you are producing and want to ingest hundreds of terabytes or even petabytes worth of data? Certainly one of these online mechanisms will not work for you and you need to look at offline ways of ingesting data and that's where the transfer of lines comes into place. So this is exactly what I meant when I said you got to design your ingestion process based on the volume of the data that you're producing. Next, let's talk about velocity. The amount of data that you can transfer over the internet to cloud is limited by the speed of light. That's just a law of physics that you cannot defy. Now let's take these different scenarios. Let's say you're producing 10 gigabytes worth of data in a day and then you only have a 10 Mbps line. You might be okay because you can ingest all of that data within three hours, which is still probably doable, you can ingest last 24 hours worth of data in the next three hours and then you can run your analytics the following day. But what if you want your analytics faster? Maybe you can get a bigger line. Let's say you are able to get 10 Gbps line, then you can ingest last one day worth of data, which is around 10 Gb in about 11 seconds. So that's how this will scale up, right? Now there are industries where you might be producing petabytes worth of data in a single day. What do you do in those scenarios? Do you ingest everything online or do you set up an offline transfer of data? We're going to look at some offline transfer solutions as well in this video. And the third parameter that I had talked about was variety of data, variety of source data and variety in how you want to ingest it. For example, whether the data is streaming or batch, 
whether it is coming from an on-premise system, from AWS, from Azure, or from any other system. Where is the data coming from? What is the source? Right? Write in whether the data type is a file, a flat file, a CSV, a JSON, or it is a database, or it is an API call. Where is the data coming from? What is the variety or the, what is the kind of the data? And also the nature of the source. Is it, an, is it a connected source? Can you ingest all of the data online? Or is it a disconnected source at a remote location and you have to rely on offline transfers? All of these parameters, volume, velocity, and variety will determine the design of your data ingestion pipeline. So let's look at what are the different options that we have for batch ingestion. The first and probably the easiest way to ingest all your data is using the cloud console. Generally, you would want to ingest less than about a terabyte worth of data, which is about a few files probably uh, through an intuitive UI provided by the cloud console. So this is purely front end based. So if you are if you have access to the Internet and if you have access to a browser, you can select the files and upload them into the bucket. And this is what it looks like. You can browse the files, select them, upload them, and that's it. They will land up in your storage bucket. The next option is using a command line tool called GSUtil. GSUtil is a very comprehensive tool to manage your Google Cloud storage buckets, but we're going to be looking at the capability of ingestion that GSUtil provides. It provides a command line interface and is ideal if you want to ingest only about a few terabytes worth of data don't expect to ingest extremely large volumes using this tool. So if you are on premise and you have the ability to install GSUtil on your servers, you can push the data to the cloud using GSUtil. So this is what it looks like. Uh, here I'm doing GSUtil minus M, CP minus R demo. So demo is a folder. CP minus R means copy recursively everything that is there in this folder to the storage bucket, which is at gs colon slash slash gcp live demo. And the minus n here allows you to parallelly process all the file uploads. Everything that is in this folder should go to the cloud in a parallel way. So it leverages multi-threading and parallel processing to speed up your data ingestion. So like I said, gsutil, extremely useful, leverages multi-threading and parallel processing uploads and downloads. It does MD5 CRC32 checksums by default, and it allows you the ability to retry and resume uploads automatically. The next tool that we're gonna look at is Google Cloud Transfer Service. It is ideal if you want to ingest data from another storage bucket, whether it be it on Amazon Web Services or Azure, or even another bucket within Google Cloud. If you want to ingest data from there, you would want to use Google Cloud Storage Transfer Service. You can ingest anywhere between tens to hundreds of terabytes with millions of files in there using this utility. So let's have a look at how it works. All you gotta do is select a source which can be an S3 bucket, an Azure bucket, a Google Cloud Storage bucket, or even a list of URLs in a single file. So if you have a file with thousands of URLs in there and you want to download all those files, this is a very simple tool that can help you do that. So let's try this out. You select a storage bucket, you specify filters, if any, and then you select your destination and that's it. That's how easy it is to ingest files from another storage bucket, be it on Google Cloud itself or Amazon or Azure or anywhere else. Your next option is to leverage BigQuery transfer service. Now, similar to the storage transfer service, you can ingest up to hundreds of terabytes worth of data using this service. But here, instead of ingesting into Google Cloud Storage, which is an object store, you're going to be ingesting directly into BigQuery, which is a fully managed global data warehouse on Google Cloud. It is ideal if you want to ingest the data from any of the Google marketing platform products, for example, Google Ads, Double Click. YouTube ads and so on, all these products have a pre-built connector in within the BigQuery transfer service to ingest all of their data into BigQuery. BigQuery transfer service is easy to set up. It provides a reliable data delivery at scale and it provides automatic upgrades to connectors every time your source system upgrades. Option five is our first offline ingestion mechanism. 
which is also known as the transfer appliance. Just think of storage appliance as a giant hard drive. It comes in two variants, I believe a 100 terabyte one and a 480 terabyte one. And imagine you can offline add all of your data into the storage appliance and you can ship it to Google Cloud, of course, through a partner and get all of your data within the cloud in no time. These appliances are rackable, so you can put them in your data center, copy all of that data and then ship it across. It is ideal if you are ingesting petabytes of data, especially during a large scale migration. Just imagine if you were on a 100 Mbps network and you're trying to ingest a petabyte worth of data. On transfer appliance, it usually takes 43 days, but on a regular internet line, it might take you almost three years to ingest all of that data. So that's the value of transfer appliance if you're ingesting extremely large volumes of data and are limited by the bandwidth because that's what your data center provides or you're in a remote location, all of these use cases means that you will be leveraging an offline transfer in the form of storage appliance. So these were the different options of how you would ingest files into Google Cloud. Here is a quick summary. We talked about five products. Google Cloud Console, GS Util, Google Cloud Transfer Service, BigQuery Transfer Service, and Transfer Appliance. Each one of them have a different value prop, and this slide provides a summary of that. Cloud Console provides an intuitive UI to upload the files using the front end, generally only up to about a terabyte, anything more than that UI is not really the way you want to go. It is best for uploading few files using a web browser. So that's the Google Cloud Console way of data ingestion. If you want to go the command line way, you're going to use GSUtil. GSUtil is a utility to manage files in Google Cloud Storage. Ideal for ingesting anywhere between a few terabytes to up to probably 10 terabytes worth of data. It allows parallel processing and multi-threading and you can upload using this versatile command line tool called GSUtil. Google Cloud Storage Transfer Service provides a quick import of online data that is already in another storage bucket, whether it is on Google Cloud Storage itself or whether it is on Amazon or Azure. If there is a storage bucket or if there is a list of URLs of files online somewhere, you can quickly import all of that data using the storage transfer service. It can be leveraged to ingest hundreds of terabytes worth of data and millions of objects. BigQuery Transfer Service is ideal if you want to ingest data from any of the marketing tools and get it straight into BigQuery, which is a global data warehouse. You can ingest anywhere between tens to hundreds of terabytes worth of data using the BigQuery Transfer Service. And the last we talked about was the storage transfer appliance, which is ideal for ingesting petabytes worth of data, especially during a large scale migration of a data warehouse. Let me know in the comments if you think this was useful. We were talking about batch data ingestion and next week we're going to be talking about streaming data ingestion. So how do you ingest a stream of events that are coming in in real time? Stay tuned and keep watching the data journey.